Thank you. So, I hope you all know where Gotland is. To get the context correct, we, we, there are certain things I have to explain before I go further. Gotland was like Sicily and uh, and the other island in the Mediterranean, the trading part, the trade went through, they were the communicators. That's why Gotland is so enormous rich. Uh, the Gotland has, Gotlandic history has nothing to do with Swedish history. They are two completely separate histories. The only thing is that they were neighbors, so history as neighbors. And the, the Gotlanders are later in the, in the Byzantine sources called Varangians or Varyag, and in the uh, Byzant no, in the Islamic, in the Arabic sources, they are called Rus. They came rowing on the Russian rivers, and uh, from that comes Rus. There were no Vikings in the Baltic Sea. There were no Vikings on the Russian rivers. Vikings were Danes, Norwegian, they went west. In the Baltic Sea, it was the Gotlanders who ruled. Uh, the time I'm going to speak about is the, the Roman time. Then they controlled the, the uh, ember trade from the Kaliningrad area down to Achillea in, uh, in uh, the Mediterranean. Uh, the, at that time here, you can see here, uh, it says, uh, it says Gotones, uh, that, that is more or less where the Gotlanders had their trading places. And of course there is still debating question, did the Goths come from Gotland or not? The Swedes think they came from Sweden, which is of course pure, pure nonsense. But the Gotlanders had the trading places, uh, and Jarek, Jarek da, da, Diamond says that it's enough that it's only 10% of the ruling people who formed the Gothic, the Gothic uh, uh, people, and then they will have their name and their uh, and their language. Uh, you know, the, the Goths, they called themselves Gutuda and the Gotlander and Gutans and the Gotlanders they called themselves Guta and, and our country is called Gutland. So at the time here that we, we are talking about uh, that way we, we have the ember trade so you see that's up there where the the Gotlandic merchants were, and that went all the way down to, to Aquileia. Here it is all the way down to, to Rome, of course. But, uh, and that is what is this described by what we call this uh, Roman merchant that is depicted by Plinius and Tacitus, that he came up here to the Baltic Sea and visited the most important places. and. It's no question that he's also visited Gotland, where all this comes from. <clears throat> so from at least the 16th century BC, amber was moved from Northern Europe to the Mediterranean area. The, the breast ornament of the Egyptian pharaoh Tutankhamun uh, contains large Baltic ember beads. Heinrich Schliemann found Baltic ember beads in Mycenae, as shown by spectroscopic investigation. The quantity of ember in the royal tomb of Quatana, Syria, is unparalleled for known second millennium BC sites in the Levant and the ancient Near East. From the Black Sea, trade could continue to Asia along the Silk Road another ancient trade route. In Roman times, the main route ran south from the Baltic coast through the land of the boiling. Okay, you can read it there. The old Prussian towns of Kaup and Susu on the Baltic were the 
starting points of the route to the south. Kaliningrad Oblast is okay, occasionally referred to in Russian as something like which means the ember area. This is the island north of Gotland called Fore, and that is Gamleham, and there they, they found parts of a Roman ship. Uh, th that thing that's I don't know if I get this going now. Okay, uh, it, it is a head that was on the thing around, and th this is from about the same time as Tacitus and uh, Plinius talks about. Uh. So, at this time here in Gotland, we had what we called slot, this type of castle. This is one of them, Harbor Castle in the southwest of Sweden. And uh, I, I will give you a little better. Here you see how it looked like. We have about 100 of them in Gotland. And there we found that treasure. This treasure here is all of that was in that thing there. The golden ring is large. The knobs are very fantastic made. But the wine soot utensils there are all stamped Capua, which is outside Naples. And they are from the first century, which means that the golden ring is older than, than the rest of it. So we are talking about the first century and earlier here. There you can see this golden ring. Uh, sorry, there is a micro. Sorry. Yeah, you can, you can see it there. And that is a fantastic one. It's about 800 grammar, so that is hollow. But anyway, the interesting thing is that in uh, Pompeii was a mosaic that now is in the museum in Naples. And this is Darius in the Battle of Issus against Alexander the Great. And the, the, you see what he has around his neck there. He has a golden ring, but it's not so elaborate as the Gotlandic one. And they, they are called uh, Celtic torques, of course, normally also. And you can see it here on the dying Galatian. He also have, have one of these. Okay. And on the, on the Gundestrup cauldron, you also see that you have that ring around the neck there. There is another one from 400 BC from France, which is not in gold, but anyway, it's a similar type. The Gotlandes art, school of art was fantastic. This one is later made uh, in the three four hundreds. You find it in uh, in Erlang and but. They consider it was made in Gotlandic workshops, and that is gold they got from the four three four hundred coins that they melted. That was the the, the Hans and also from the from East uh, Constantinople and there. there. There are another one, and that is the yeah. Th this is the one from yeah. I, the first one I don't know where Mernay is, but Ferriestaden is of course in Ireland. And here we see here we have the ships that they used here, and on the picture stones you can see it down there. They are very similar to the ones they had on the Nile, and these are picture stones in Gotland from the sec second, third, fourth century. Uh, the picture stones are unique for Gotland also. We find them down in, in, in Spain, Portugal, in Duero Valley, 
but then the Gotlanders probably learned it, learned it from them and then they made their picture stones. We have a couple of hundred of them. This is very interesting. This picture stone here is from 292. Why I can tell you that is the picture stone is probably older, but the thing up there is the Enkes comet, and we know that that was visible in 292. So that was put on it when they, it was visible. So, and here is another type of of picture stone. And here you can see the trading routes here. Gotland is in the center, and that is a little later, no, that's the Varangian time. Uh, as I said, there were no Vikings in the Baltic Sea. There were no Vikings on the Russian rivers. There are no Swedes or Scandinavians in, on the Ru Russian rivers before 1019, and I presume you all know what happened in 1019. If not, it was Jarvis. What was No, the, he, he, okay. What was the name? Was it Jarvis in, in Kiev? He killed his brother and became ruler, and all of Schrödgoning in Sweden sent his daughter there and married, and she had a contingent of Swedes with her. That's the first Swedes we find in Russia. Anyway, Gotland, in 750, they had, Gotland had a trading place on the Swedish mainland called Helge, but that was too small when the Islamic Caliphate moved their capital, 762, from Damascus to Baghdad with a new dynasty, and they found plenty of silver there. The Gotlanders, who knew the Russian rivers very well, long, long, long before, they went away there, sold furs, slaves, and weapons, and got paid in coins. Scotland has today the world's largest collections of coins most of them minted in Baghdad. At the same time, they moved their <coughs> place in the Lake Mela area from Helge to <coughs> Birka, which they founded more or less at the same time. So Birka is a Gotlandic trading place. Uh, and it's next to the next island where the Swedish king lived. So, they, they traded this thing, and, and later on, okay, they also traded with Khazaria, and so on, and of course, down with Miklagarda, which is Constantinople. And there, one of the Varangian, the Gotlandic merchants that were in the delegation in 838 found a woman, and of course, their, their daughter then became mistress to Emperor Michael III, and their son, Leo became emperor in 886 under the name Leo the Sixth the Wise. So we have all this with the Gotlandic trade here, and that's why Gotland is so rich. And of course, then they were Christianized in 866, and uh, Gotland was Byzantine. Not like in Sweden, they were Catholics. Gotland was Byzantine Christian. And the uh, Gotlandic church was under the Gotlandic Republic. Gotland was a republic, if I didn't mention it before. You can, re you can read about all of this here in, uh, on academia.edu. My, oh, is that the last one? Okay. Oh. Something happened. The, anyway, uh, my, my research is 1,100 pages in English all about the Varangian history and their world unique churches. Uh, the first one, the history is 399 pages. The one about the churches is 701 with 1,400 photos. I have split it up 100 megabit each. It's about 10 parts and I have put it all on academia.edu, so you don't need to carry all this 4.6 kilos, so you can read it direct on there. Thank you. <laughs>